kept his eyes open, looking for any hint of the would-be assassin. Even as they reached the end of the portico, where it joined the wider roof that protected the garden courtyard entrance to the council office building. There, two guards armed with long-barreled revolvers and black truncheons stood at their posts, flanking the ornate double doors, the only unlocked garden entrance after the sixth bell, the one announcing evening. To Deckard, their pale green uniforms looked more like sun-bleached leaves in the early evening humidity, especially in contrast to their crisp black belts and boots. Their eyes slipped past the counselor and paused as they took in Deckard's soaked gray tunic and trousers, and the unsheathed short sword he still held. Are you all right, counselor? I'm fine, thank you. Oberdor's warm intonation definitely carried the feel of thanks. Deckard scared off the intruder. But that voice is one of the reasons why he's a counselor. Not that Deckard would likely ever be a counselor, although there was no law in Goldor forbidding an isolate from holding office. Only empaths and susceptibles were so prohibited, although isolates were regarded warily because their emotions couldn't be read by empaths. Deckard opened the heavy bronze door, holding it for Oberdor and Yasela, then followed them into the wide hallway inside, with its green marble floors. Once inside, he sheathed the gladius. The walls were also tiled in green marble, up to the chair rail, above which the walls were a light cream. The hallway was only partially illuminated, with only every third bronze gas lamp lit. Later in the evening, half of those now lit would be extinguished. Oberdor led the way to the wide green marble staircase, edged with matching green marble balustrades and bright bronze banisters a staircase that rose to a landing halfway up to the second level, from the S's extended the remainder of the way. As a counselor, not in the majority party, Oberdor had offices on the second level, those of the senior commerce party counselors being on the ground level, and the offices of council clericals and routine functionaries being on the third level. There was no central staircase to the third level. Strictly functional staircases at each end of the building served the clericals and functionaries. As he followed the counselor up the stairs, Deckard couldn't help wondering about the attack. From the marble-railed area around the open staircase, Yasela led the way down the long corridor, roughly thirty yards, to the polished golden oak door with a bronze plaque set on the wall to the right, two-thirds of a yard above the marble chair rail. The plaque stated simply, Counselor Axel Oberdor. Yasela stepped up to the door, standing there for a long moment, then unlocked it and turned to Deckard. Knowing that she had sensed no one inside, Deckard unsheathed the gladius once more, opened the door, and stepped into the large and dark outer anteroom, where he twisted the key on the wall lamp beside the door and pulled down on the compression lighter. The lamp flared into light, a light he utilized to confirm that the anteroom was empty. Then he walked to the side door to the staff office, opening it and finding no one there. Closing that door, he moved back to the door into the counselor's private office and opened it, and then lit the wall lamp beside the window before returning to the anteroom, where Yasela and Oberdor waited. Thank you both, said Oberdor, before making his way into the private office and closing the door behind himself. Once Oberdor was secure in his private office, with the door firmly shut, and the two were alone in the outer antechamber, lit by the single gas lamp, Deckard turned to the counselor's empy and asked in a low voice, Was that more than the usual emp blast? Yasela nodded. But Deckard shook his head. The training for an empy to learn the feelings of agonizing death well enough to project them killed most empies who underwent it which was one reason why it was forbidden by every government in the world. Officially, anyway. She was stupid? Or she's a fanatic? A fanatic? Deckard wasn't that surprised that the empy had been a woman, not considering that, while empaths were rare, three out of four were women. But most women tended not to be fanatics. A political fanatic. What other kind is there? Deckard nodded. But the question remained. Why would anyone risk so much to target a craft counselor, even the second most senior one? 